President Obama just gave a uh, speech. I believe he uh, did it from the Department of Justice um, uh, on NSA reforms. Just briefly, let me just go down um, them uh, rather quickly, and then you know we can we, we can analyze this. I mean, uh, the sure. obviously the uh, there's. There's a lot of stuff here, but um, oh, I just somehow lost my sheet of paper that had all of it. But basically, the uh, the biggest, I guess, reforms that he mentioned were uh, n- f- trying to review a way to find out where we can continue to grab everything, <laughs> um, uh, bulk. Um, uh, bulk surveillance, but not have it stored by the NSA. I don't know if we would uh, just leave it with um, with the Home uh, Depot, telecom, maybe uh, telecom, or maybe uh, Home Depot. Maybe we could also ask um, uh, Giuliani Partners to um, uh, hold on to it uh, for <laughs> us. I mean, who knows? They uh, couldn't even hold on to his hair. So I mean, Jesus, <laughs> you know. We we uh, he goes on to say that. Um, uh, that, you know, that th- there's going to be more oversight from the FISA court. They're going to um, create an outside body of presumably people who care about civil uh, liberties to review in certain situations and participate in the FISA court. Um, they're, uh, they're only going to say that you got you can only have certain powers when it's necessary. I mean, let you know. Let's cut to the quick here. Uh, the 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 problem with much of this was we kept hearing the words intention over and over again. Uh, we kept hearing about how the NSA has not intentionally uh, captured Americans' um, uh, uh, information. Uh, the FISA court at one point said only 11% of numbers being queried by the NSA met the legal standards. That's 1,800 out of 17,000 every day that they queried. Uh, So intention sort of is really not the point, is it? No, I mean, my problem here, look, I I think this is a complicated thing to to try and reform, but I just still feel like on, on some of the NSA decisions, much like with a number of other areas, economics and foreign policy, you know, things that President Obama is deferential to those who he kind of thinks are the in the know, you know, the establishment. I, I think it's a pattern that kind of hasn't changed during his presidency. And, you know, clearly we need to be collecting intelligence and, we, you know, particularly on, on foreign threats. But, you know, the bulk collection of data, and, you know, and I'm, I'm going to just come out and say I'm not sure what all the answers are to this, but if you do, Sam, I'm happy to hear them. Um, but relying on FISA courts, well, let's, we'll go back to where I started. The bulk collection of data seems to me um, to be clearly unconstitutional, um, and there has to be a way of doing it, you know, to, where they can get specific warrants for what they need. Um, the... the uh, you know, over, overall, kind of the, the the differentiation between you know what he's looking at domestically versus what or you know he they are looking at domestically versus when it comes to foreign powers um, is an important distinction and one that I don't think they're really making uh, enough of of that kind of distinction and that is a problem. Um, you know, I, I just uh, the FISA courts are uh, were, were. I admit, I trusted them in the past. I mean, my answer when George Bush, you know, the, with the illegal wiretapping was, you know, well, this is ridiculous. We had the FISA Act. We should be going through FISA courts. But once you find out that it's like John Roberts stuffing the FISA courts with his buddies, and that they're pretty much, you know, rubber stamping anything that comes through, uh, that's a problem too. So I'm not sure I know what the answers, all the answers are. I know that that transparency. Uh, you can't have full transparency because we're talking about national security, but I think the more people that are in a room of varying backgrounds helps. History again and again proves you do something in secret, it gets abused. Uh, if it's certainly by all people who share a mindset, you know, we went through all this stuff during the Kennedy years and and the Church Committee and the rest, and 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 the pa- balance of power has fallen back towards the NSA. Because let's face it, there's a lot of these guys who go and they go out into private businesses, they come back in. Uh, they've got you know the connections, uh, the revolving door, 
uh, we've we've seen all this stuff. On the stuff that we know about, we've seen all this stuff. You know, what's his name? Ex, uh, de- you know, uh, Homeland Security cheered off. You know, leaves Homeland Security and immediately is telling us all we need to buy these freaking machines for the airports that, of course, his company is selling. So you're going to tell me they do that on a, on a in public? What's going on in private? Uh, you know, I don't know, but I'd love. I, I I think I'm glad we're having the conversation. I'm glad that President Obama felt compelled to come forward and share some ideas. I still don't think we're there yet. Yeah, I, well, you know, the, um, uh, the 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 biggest issue, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think the thing I got distracted, uh, um, uh, that distracted me during the speech was the uh, constant use. Uh, I mean, well, there was a couple of things, and this is sort of almost not, this is sort of a, a, a broader view. The, the president kept saying intentional, uh, and there's been no attentional, intentional, uh, but, you know, when you see unintentional <laughs> violations over and over and over again, right. it's a reminder that intentions are not really at issue here. Uh, you know, one can argue as whether or not that, you know, if you keep doing something unintentionally over and over again, uh, you really are doing it unintentionally. But the the point well, is, well, at some point, if you keep doing it unintentionally over again, it doesn't matter, does it? Right. You're and do, I mean, whether you're doing it intentionally or not, you're doing it. But particularly in this realm, intentions are irrelevant. At one point, the president said, "Look, I've been on both sides of this. I was very skeptical when I came in, and uh, when uh, I came in uh, uh, to become president, when I became president, I saw it from the other perspective. But you know, I'm sorry." This is exactly why we need a very specific, very rigid set of laws, because we can't even if we are to accept the fact that President Obama is perfectly attuned to what that balance should be and that we can trust him, which I don't necessarily subscribe to. But even if I am to grant him that, the fact is, is that why should we this is. He's not going to be president forever. Uh, In fact, we know that he's not going to be president two and a half years from now, uh, three years. Come on, President Ted Cruz wouldn't abuse him. Exactly, exactly. So, so it's not it's not enough, and it's not even relevant as to how sort of uh, judicious he is or those in his executive branch are. And so that, that it's it's just an incredible red herring. The other thing that I f- found very distracting is that um, he kept referencing uh, 9-11 and the threats. And we know that this was not a question uh, that the there was not en- enough information. We know uh, it was because it wasn't shared properly. We also now know there was a New America Foundation report that came out that basically enhanced what we saw in that uh, U.S. Court of Appeals case uh, from a couple of weeks ago, which is that there is no evidence that this uh, bulk vacuuming up of of metadata, which can actually identify people far more than the president led on to, has had any um, uh, use in stopping so-called terrorist attacks. It's just, it's just, there's no evidence of it. And right. every time I mean, you hear somebody cite one of these cases, whether it's the Zazi case uh, or, or any other, it's been, the use of that data has been debunked. And so uh, we still have a question of like, what is the justification, whether you put it in the hands of the telecoms or Giuliani partners or whomever, what is the justification for all this stuff? Right. Well, and I also just have to ask the question, you know, because I remember we got into this whole debate when, for example, when torture was going on, and we kind of got dragged into the the realm of does it work or not? And I, you know, I don't even care. I mean, there, you, you, you know, yeah, it, I, it clearly from what what people are saying who actually know what they're talking about, which generally doesn't include Jonah Goldberg, uh, it doesn't work. But it doesn't matter to me because if you're doing something that is against the very founding and principles of this country that makes us a democracy, then, you know, great that it works. I'm sure there's other things where it works, too. If you, if you go into an apartment building and you take out 100 people and randomly threaten to shoot all of them, you may find one criminal. Uh, but the, that's great that that works. Is that the country I want to live in? And so the bulk collection of data, as you said, doesn't seem to work, but I don't care so much. What I care about is 
the fact that we're entering an age of time now where using data and algorithms, you, you know, you can figure out where people are. I mean, you know, th this stuff is so advanced, it's kind of frightening. You know, look at what shows up w when you go online, who's advertising to you and how they know to do so and, you know, how people can easily figure out where you were and when you were there. I mean, you know, we've got to deal with all this with private companies right now, too. I mean, hell, I'm sure Facebook's selling everything, every piece of information here is under the freaking, you know, sun if they can. So with the NSA, you can't tell me, you know, in, in the history of this kind of power is that it's always abused. Right. So anybody who thinks that this kind of stuff is not going to be abused for political reasons, for personal reasons, because, you know, I mean, you know, we've never seen things like Sarah Palin using a trooper, you know, to go after, like, what, her sister's ex-boyfriend or her sister's ex-husband or whatever, right? We've never seen Chris Christie use the government uh, to punish people who are trying to drive over a bridge. Anybody who thinks that when people are in power are not going to abuse this kind of thing, they are. So you, you needed to have two things. One – only do what is constitutional and necessary, and two, it needs to be severely safeguarded. And I'm not sure how exactly we get there. I certainly think expanding FISA court, the FISA court to a certain degree, taking away the power for the Supreme Court justice, in my opinion, I don't care what Supreme Court it is. It happens to be Roberts, so they frighten me. To put the judges on those, on those courts, to, to put it in front of a wider group of people who get to decide which judges sit on those courts, a diverse group of people, for example, needs to be done. Uh, there are a number of things, obviously, that need to be done. When it comes to the bulk collection, you know, I just don't – everything tells me that it's not necessary and it's not constitutional. And quite frankly, you know, before we were doing that, we were stopping people if we were paying attention. You know, there are no, no fewer than 60-something warnings. When you talk about 9-11, it was all right there in front of them. Right. I mean, all these assholes, pardon my French, who were screaming about Benghazi and making me want to punch them in the face. Yeah, I know. It was terrible, and we lost four people there. And you know what? The State Department should have had better security, although we should have never been in Libya, but that's a whole other story. But, yeah, how about the guys who were learning how to just, you know, guide airplanes and not take them off and land them, and the guys that were hanging out down in Florida going to strip clubs who, you know, were, were magically were overstaying their visas. And, you know, there's a lot of other stuff we need to get right first. Oh, and by the way, you know, all the stuff – the stuff I work on on guns, you know, yeah, we need to know every movement every one of these people made. Let's not check though whether they if they are on, they're on a terror watch list or they've committed criminal acts before. If they're going to buy uh, a uh, 50 caliber rifle that can take down a helicopter, you know, there's a, which we're not by the way right now. You can go to a parking lot somewhere near you and, and get that depending upon the state you're in. There's a lot of things we can do that fit quite well within the Constitution to make all of us safer, and we're not even trying with a lot of them. But we're going to do this, you know, we're going to sweep up all the all this information. No, you know, and let's get let's do the things that work. There are a bunch of them uh, that do work uh, and and would have worked. And there are plenty of things, you know, if George W. Bush hadn't needed to go to clear all that brush off in his Crawford Ranch and think deep thoughts about stem cell research, there were there were a hell of a lot of warnings without bulk, uh, uh, you know, bulk uh, gathering of data that were right there in front of his face. Yeah, and you know, let, I mean, ultimately, I mean, I want to I want to move on, and and we'll obviously talk more about this uh, on this program in the in the days and weeks to come. But uh, you know, I think this was uh, a reflection, and President Obama did uh, reference uh, Snowden, uh, and didn't want to ruminate on it, and then went on to sort of say how dangerous it was <laughs> uh, to have these revelations. Uh, but of course, uh, and the implication being that you know we were going to. We were going to talk about this stuff. I was really headed down that path, and then there was, and then there was a little bit of like you know China and Russia are worse, uh, which of course they are. Um, but um, the, ultimately, I think you know this is a response to uh, the growing pressure in uh, the House and the Senate to 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 reform this stuff in a meaningful way. And I should note one other uh, note uh, before we go on that any of these reforms that the president institutes from an executive uh, level, um, there's still another bite at the apple legislatively. And so, you know, it remains to be seen whether or not this is going to let some of that air out of the tires uh, or not. My guess is it won't. Um, right. It is, no, I don't think so either. The, the politics of this are out. very strange because, you know, I don't know how many Americans are sitting down and actually engaging in this. I just don't no, think there's sure that either. many. But 
Uh, certainly. I still want to know before we go on to any other topic, though, because I'm interested, uh, as I respect your big brain, Sam, what you think we should do in terms of reforms. Well, I mean, I think I think we need to make the FISA court. We need to bring the FISA court into some um, more, um, I think, to keep it less of a parallel system of of adjudicating these things. I think that there is value in. Um, bringing in, I mean, he mentioned sort of some broad outlines of it, but it seems um, uh, uh, some form of um, uh, 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 of advocacy for defendants in front of the, uh, the FISA court. In other words, um, right now, or for, just, the, for the Constitution, in other words, yes. I mean, right now, and, you, just argue, have, yeah. you just have you just have the executive branch going in and saying, "Here's our case as to why we should be able to expand our authority under these statutes," and there's nobody arguing against that. And um, right. clearly, our whole system is based upon that. Having right. advocates on both sides. So, yeah, that's an easy reform. I, I agree think with that's that, uh, somewhat uh, problematic. And I also think that the 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 you know the, he went down from three hops to two hops on the bulk meta metadata collection, you know that if you have two hundred friends on Facebook, I think I saw um, um, one of the guys from the Guardian write the uh, right that that's you know that basically allows for uh, sucking up thirty thousand people's um, uh, uh, data. I think that's just too broad of a net and. Um, I, I think that's just too problematic. And I think we just need far more transparency in the uh, in the process. So, um, I mean, I think there there's obviously more reforms. I mean, they haven't even dealt with the encryption standards. Um, it's 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 a massive undertaking. But I think what I didn't see from the president today was enough of an acknowledgement of the problem. And right. that's what sort of. That's what's Do you problem. think, I, I'm just interested in what you think about this, do you think there's any uh, justification for any semi-bulk gathering of data? And when I say semi, let me, let me be very clear, which is people that have been accused, people that have been engaged in activity or have made a terror watch list or anything. In other words, not just everybody, but those sort of who potentially have not been convicted and yet we're tracking for various reasons. What are your well, thoughts? Look, if there's I'm, I'm, reasonable I'm suspicion, interested if you, you have uh, reasonable suspicion of uh, of specific people, uh, of course, of course, yep. there's value there. But that's, I mean, that's the issue. Is that this is not this is willy nilly. Um, I guess it's really whatever that standard rises to of reasonable suspicion, and, and and maybe that's just what the FISA court decides is you know reasonable suspicion. We're yeah. back to where we started. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you and I are pretty much in the same place because I, I I like to get to talk it out because I think some of this stuff is not just black and white. It's obviously complicated, you know. And and I, it, to me, what's clear is what we've been doing is wrong. What's less clear is how to make it exactly right, which is what I'm trying to think out. I, I mean, yeah. I think you know the way you do that is basically get rid of bulk uh, bulk data collection because by its de- very definition, that's what it is. It is collecting right. people's data regardless of uh, without really any specific reason other than through a six degrees of separation, um, they are in some way related to someone you think might be uh, someone worth watching. And uh, I think that's problematic. But but let's let's um, I agree with that. Let's I agree. Move. Unless they're unless they're gay or Muslim, in which case we should keep doing it. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I would I throw in myself. vegan. I don't think you want to let the vegans off so easy either. You can't trust vegans, clearly. And uh, and yes, All right. certainly m- male Jews who originate from the Northeast. Uh, also Men with throw curly hair. Men with curly yeah. hair. Kinky hair. One, one um, that Ron Paul supporters say look very Jewish when they come on. 